Hey there folks, the Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our ultimate travel guide to the island of Kauai. In this video, we'll tell you everything you need to know about taking a vacation to Kauai. From where to stay, to the best times to visit, to the logistics of getting around, and of course, all the top sites to see from north to south. And when I say all, I mean dozens and dozens of sites, beaches, hikes, and more. And I'll throw in a few fun facts and pro tips along the way. Okay, let's go. First up, just a bit of background on Kauai. Kauai is the northernmost island in the Hawaiian Islands chain. It's the oldest island in the chain and it's the least visited. Its nickname is the Garden Isle as it's the most green and lush of the islands. But I'll let you in on a well-known secret here already. I think a better nickname for this island might be the Isle of Chickens, and I'll explain this a bit later in the video. Kauai is not a big island. It's only about 33 miles wide by 25 miles long, and the population is small too. It only has about 70,000 full-time residents. Compared to Oahu, Maui, or the Big Island, Kauai is smaller, less populated, more rural, and more laid back. So, if you're planning to come to Kauai for shopping or nightlife, you will be disappointed. Kauai is really more about awesome beaches, awesome hiking, snorkeling, scuba, whale and seal watching, and the history. What about the best time to come to Hawaii? Well, you've probably heard any time is a good time to visit Hawaii, and that's true, but there are better times than others if you want to avoid the more rainy season, or you want the cheapest possible prices with the least amount of crowds. Let's start with the crowds and cost. The peak times for visitors and high pricing are spring break time and the summer months of June through August. If you have a family with kids, this timing might be unavoidable, but otherwise, if you want to avoid the highest pricing and most crowds, try to skip these months. The winter months of November through February tend to be a little wetter and overcast, but these are good months for getting some great deals. Finally, if you want the trifecta of the best weather, minimal crowds, and relatively low pricing, come in September, after most of the kids have gone back to school but the winter winds and rain have not yet arrived. Now, let's talk about getting around the island and the lay of the land. The island is roughly circular with large impassable mountains around the center. The primary road is a coastal road running from the north coast to the south coast. But there is no road which fully circles the island so you can't drive a loop around it. There's just one airport on Kauai, and it's located near the east coast town of Lihui. The north and east sides of the island are known as the windward side, and they get the most wind or rain during the winter season. The south and west sides of the island are known as the leeward side, and generally offer a bit more sun and less wind. But really, any part of Kauai is beautiful in great weather most of the year. If you're staying only a couple of days, then it's perhaps possible to get by without a rental car by simply taking some guided day trips. But if you are on Kauai for anything more than a couple of days, we'd highly recommend renting a car. Although Kauai is a small island, the traffic is slow and getting from the very north to the very south of the island or vice versa can often take two hours or more. Finally, let's get back to that Isle of Chickens comment I mentioned earlier. When you come to Kauai, you will very quickly realize there are tons of chickens everywhere. It's kind of funny, and it's unique to Kauai. In fact, there are far more chickens on the island than there are people, and they just run around freely. There's a whole interesting backstory on why this is, but I won't ruin it here for you. Let's just say you will certainly have your share of random chicken encounters. Now, let's talk about where to stay. There are really just three areas to consider for most visitors. The Princeville and Hanalei area to the north, the Coconut Coast on the east, 
in Poipu and Waimea area on the south. Princeville and Hanalei area on the north side of the island is the least developed, but it has some of the nicest beaches and the best hiking. Most of the lodging options here are small boutique style options other than Princeville. Princeville itself is a very nice, very large, master plan community with some big resorts and many condo and VRBO options. The East Coast, often called the Coconut Coast, is another nice option to consider. This area is closest to the airport and close to the big commercial area if you want to stock up at a Costco or Walmart. There are a couple of nicer resorts here like the Marriott and the Sheraton, but otherwise, again, the rest of the options are mainly smaller lodging and condos. The key benefit to staying on the Coconut Coast is that it's the most central from getting around the island between the north and the south sides. Finally, Poipu and Waimea on the south have the largest concentration of resorts and it's probably the most popular and populated with tourists. It may be because this area is also the sunniest part of the island. Here you have the Grand Hyatt, another Marriott or two, another Sheraton and more. There are some really nice smaller options here too, particularly in the Waimea area. Finally, another fun fact to leave you with here. There are no tall buildings on Kauai, since there's a strict building code which limits all buildings to the height of the tallest coconut tree. So, no matter where you stay, it will be limited to either three or four stories high. Now, with all the logistics and lodging details out of the way, Let's get to all those top things to see and do on Kauai. I'm going to give you so many choices here that you won't know where to start. So to make it a bit easier, I'll cover them in general areas traveling from north to south. For this ultimate visitor guide to Kauai, I'll cover all of them, but only briefly, just a few seconds for each. But don't worry, if you want to know more details on everything like hours, admission costs, how to do them, etc., and we've got two more Kauai videos for you to check out. Kauai, the North Shore Guide, and Kauai, the South Shore Guide. Okay, here we go. Starting from the north, at the very end of the road, is Hyena State Park. It's the most popular park on the North Shore, and it's famous for the Kalalau Trail. Just outside this park, heading east, is Limahuli Gardens, which has some nice hiking trails into the rainforest worth checking out. And then Manini Holo Dry Cave is next. This place is really worth a stop and great for family exploring. And your first nice beach is right across the street. After that, you will shortly come to your second of more than a dozen beautiful beaches on the North Shore, Tunnels Beach. It's over a mile long and great for snorkeling and scuba due to the underwater lava tubes in this area. And turning to the right down here, connects to what they call Tunnels Beach, which is, it doesn't have much parking, so you could really walk from here. A bit further east is Lumahai Beach, another beauty accessed by a short hike through a tropical path. Pro tip, there's actually a cliff jump here into the ocean if you look for it. Next up is your first town, and really the only town on the North Shore. It's the famous Hanalei, a quaint little beach village along with the famous Hanalei Bay on one side and beautiful North Shore mountains on the other. There are a number of interesting sites to see around the town, like Hanalei Pier and Waioli Huia Church which I'll cover more in our dedicated North Shore Guide. Leaving the town, you'll pass a couple of beautiful overlooks to check out the Hanalei Valley, and then you'll pass the master plan community of Princeville with its big resorts and golf courses. After that, there's another awesome beach, Anini Beach. This one is super big and super calm, even in the winter, so it's perhaps the best option on the island for snorkeling. After Anini, there's another beach, but this one's secret. Well, actually it's called Secret Beach. And to get there requires a 15 minute steep hike 
down to the ocean, where you'll have a two-sided beach to explore. Along with the short hike down, this was one of our favorite beaches. Finally, rounding out the north side of the island is Kilauea Point Lighthouse and Kilauea Point National Wildlife Refuge. We recommend stopping here, but it does have limited hours and it requires an advanced online booking. So check out more details on our North Shore Island Guide if you're interested. After this, you start to bend down the northeast coast and come to another beach called Molo'a'a Beach. It's another gorgeous beach and another one of our favorites. It's smaller and feels very tropical. Maybe this is why the beach was used as the backdrop for the popular 1960s show Gilligan's Island. For this reason, this beach is also sometimes called Gilligan's Island Beach. We are at Molawa Beach. This is a very famous beach because this is where they filmed Gilligan's Island, one of my favorite shows growing up. After Gilligan's Island Beach, you'll have a chance to take a break from the beaches and stop at the Garden Isle Chocolate Farm. It's a pretty cool place if you've never done a chocolate or cacao tour, and more details of this place in our extended North Island Guide. After the Garden Isle Chocolate Farm, you're now headed down the East Coast and coming up on one more desolate but beautiful beach, Paliku Beach or also known as Donkey Beach. It's hard to pick just one beach as a favorite since I really like this one too and this one has a bonus treat, a cool tree tunnel to check out. Finally, directly on the east coast you'll come to the second town on the north side of the island, Kapa'a Town. Here you can explore the old plantation era buildings still in use as well as some food trucks and restaurants in the area. In addition to the town itself, there are a number of things you can do in and around the area. Perhaps the biggest attraction and one of our favorites on the entire island was the Kapa'a Oceanfront Bike Path. It's a 10 mile one way paved beachfront bike path perfect for walking and biking and absolutely gorgeous views as you bike north out of Kapa'a town. You can rent bikes around the midway point in the town of Kapa'a. Just outside the town are two great hikes. Haopi Falls, which is a two and a half mile round trip hike through a rainforest to Haopi Falls. You'll hike through the area used in Jurassic Park movies. The second hike is a bit more challenging, hiking up Sleeping Giant, otherwise known as Now Now Mountain. This one is 3.4 miles round trip and it's typically muddy and somewhat steep, so be aware of that. But there are great views both to the east and the west as you climb the mountain. All right, babe, what are we doing? Okay, so we're hiking this badass mountain here. I think we're going to go to that very top. It says it's a somewhat easy hike, but it's muddy. It's called the Now Now East or the Sleeping Giant Trailhead. There are also two smaller beaches near Kapa'a that are particularly great for small children with protected areas for young kids to explore. They are Fuji Beach and Lydgate Park. Both have very shallow and protected water to wade around in and Lydgate Park even has some worthwhile snorkeling. Finally, two more sites to consider in the hills just west of Kapa'a Town. One is another chocolate farm to consider in case you missed the one up north or are coming from the south side of the island. It's called Lydgate Farms Chocolate Tour. The second site is a cool Hindu monastery. Who would think there would be a monastery in Kauai? But it's a quite a popular site and there's a cool story about how it came to be. Wow, you're probably thinking this is already way too much stuff to do in only one or two days, and you'd be right. But I'm not even done with the north side of the island yet. 
we still have the famous Wailua River area. Here you can take boat tours along the river and visit the famous Fern Grotto or rent your own kayaks and check out Secret Falls. If you don't want to do an activity directly on the water, you can simply get in your car and check out two waterfalls, Opika Falls and Wailua Falls. Wailua being a double waterfall and probably the most famous on the island. Okay, we're finally done with all the North Island sites and the South Island sites are next. But just a quick break here to say if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, forward it to a few of your friends, and please consider following our channel for more fun, informative videos just like this one. Okay, onward to the South Side. My definition of the South Side of the island is everything below Lihui Town, along with the Waimea Canyon sites which can only be accessed from Waimea Town on the south side of the island. Lihui Town is first, but I won't touch on it much as it's primarily the island's commercial hub and the airport is here. But it's not that appealing from a tourist perspective other than stocking up on supplies at Costco or Walmart. The first real tourist site you'll come to will be the Kauai Plantation Railway. Here you can take a guided train ride as well as nature walks, animal feeding, and try out a pick yourself fruit orchard. Next up is the famous tree tunnel on your way to Poipu, which is a mile long stretch of road with a hundred year old eucalyptus trees. It's pretty cool, but just a drive through. Also on your way to Poipu will be Old Koloa Town. It's only about two blocks long but the buildings here are charming reminders from the plantation days, and there are a few shops and restaurants worth considering. Finally, you'll come into the Poipu area and you'll have a number of sites to consider. Poipu itself is basically a tourist village with a collection of tourist shops and restaurants, along with a concentration of bigger resorts all in one area. There are a number of smaller beaches here, but the two most popular and famous are Poipu Beach, which is often ranked as one of the world's top beaches by travel surveys. See it for yourself. It's certainly a busy beach, but personally, I don't think it compares to many of the beaches on the North Shore. The other popular beach in this area is called Shipwrecks Beach. I think it's the nicer of the two beaches, but it's not swimmable much of the time. But a bonus here are the cool cliffs and a great coastal hike, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Beyond the beaches, you have two or three other sites to check out here as well. To the west of Poipu, along the beach road, are a combination botanical gardens of Allerton and McBride. And right across the street from that is Spouting Horn Park, which is a popular ocean blowhole. If the tide is right, you can see it blow water into the air and make some noise. But it's fenced off, so you really can't get close to it. Finally, the other site here is a hiking trail. But it's not just any hiking trail, but a beautiful hike along an untouched coast. If you do only one hike in Kauai, we think it should be this one. It's called the Mahalepu Heritage Trail, and it's a total of about six miles one way, but most people just hike the first two miles to Makawahi Cave. The trail has incredible views, petroglyphs, a tortoise sanctuary, and the last little bit of Southern Coast, which has never been developed, plus that cave. Check out our Kauai South Shore Guide for more information on how to do this hike. This is about two mile hike from Shipwreck. After Poipu, you'll head further west along the southern coast and next come to Kauai Coffee Plantation. Here you can do some coffee samples for free, buy some larger coffees, and visit their small museum. 
here. It's about 20 minutes. What do you say, Scottsdale Travel Check? Okay, let's go. All right. After you've had your time at the coffee plantation, continue west to the small towns of Hanapepe and Waimea. There are some shops and restaurants in Hanapepe to explore, along with a popular swinging bridge to check out if you have the time. Then, Waimea Town is next. It's similar to Hanapepe in that it's a real locals town and it's probably most famous as the starting point for the famous drive up into Waimea Canyon. And we'll cover this in just a bit, but there's one popular site coming into Waimea Town that might be worth your stop, a Russian fort. There's a whole story to this, and I won't give it away here, but consider making a quick stop here to check out the remains. Next up is Waimea Canyon Drive in the Napali Coast. This is perhaps the biggest single attraction on Kauai Island, and this drive and its associated sites will take you a good full day, particularly if you do any decent hike. Waimea Canyon is sometimes referred to as the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, and some of its views are quite incredible. Taken as a whole, the Waimea Canyon and Nepali Coast experience is simply a 38-mile round-trip drive up into a canyon area on the southwest side of the island. There are a number of really breathtaking viewpoints along the drive, as well as many, many hiking options. And at the end, there are great views out over the rugged Napali coast. However, pro tip, be aware that there's only one place to stop for food or drink along the entire drive. And that's at the Kokehe Lodge, almost at the end of the road so probably best to bring some extra water and snacks with you. Here are just a few of the things to see and do along this drive. As I already mentioned, there are numerous incredible lookout points along the drive, but it does cost money to visit some of them, so be aware of that. We cover more details in our dedicated South Island guide. There's a red dirt waterfall. Okay, this seems to be a pretty popular stop and it's pretty cool, but it's also, to us, a little underwhelming once you actually see it. Anyway, probably worth a stop and getting a few pictures. There's also an Iliao nature loop. This is a short half mile walk along a ridge of the canyon with some interpretive signs about local plants and animals. This is the shortest hike you can do along this drive, and it's probably something everyone should stop and do. But in addition to this very short hike, there are more than a dozen very popular hikes to consider along this drive. I touch on a few more during our detailed South Island guide, but overall I just suggest checking out a few websites to find the best one of many here for you. Finally, towards the end of the drive, you'll come to Kokehe State Park. Here there's a small museum, some kid-friendly trails, and again, the only place along this trip for a bite to eat at the Kokehe Lodge. Then at the very end of the road, there are a couple of awesome lookouts to the west and a trailhead into the rugged Napali coast. After you've seen what you wanted at the end of the road, it's time to turn around and head back down, stopping at whatever sites you missed on the way up. Overall, let's just say that if you're into nature and outdoorsy things, this trip up into Waimea Canyon and the Nepali Coast is going to be a great day for you. Phew! That's a lot of stuff to consider already, right? And you might think I'm done since I've covered both the north and south sides of the island, but you'd be wrong. Let me just finish things off with a few of the most popular guided and group excursions you might want to consider in Kauai. 
Keep in mind there are plenty more than this, but these are probably the most popular options when you visit the island. First up, of course, are whale watching and snorkeling tours. Kauai is a prime destination for whale watchers, especially humpbacks in the winter season, with December through April being the peak. Also extremely popular, but also very expensive, are Nepali coast tours, either by boat or by helicopter. Again, many companies offer these tours, so shop around and maybe look for a coupon to keep the price down as best you can. If you want something a little bit cheaper than horseback rides, bike rides, river kayaking, and stand-up paddle boards on local rivers are also very popular in some of the least expensive group tours. Finally, one can't visit Hawaii without attending at least one luau, right? There are three primary options around Kauai for you to consider. Tahiti Nui in Hanalei in the north, Smith Family Luau near Kapa'a Town on the east coast, and the Grand Hyatt Luau in Poipu on the south. If you want to know more about some of these options, be sure to check out our extended Kauai North Island and South Island guides for more details. Well, there you have it folks, our ultimate visitor guide to exploring the island of Kauai. We hope we gave you a good taste of all the sites and activities you have to consider on your visit to Kauai. Did we do a good job? Did we miss any of your favorites or maybe you have a secret tip you'd like to share with others? Well, please let us know in the comments section below and please keep following us for more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.